Hi guys, my name is Mirko and I'm your Italian tutor. Today we are going to talk about opera. But remember, if you're new to my YouTube channel, remember to subscribe. Or if you're already a subscriber, click the notification bell because every time I make a video, you're going to be notified. So this video has been requested by Aiden the Theologist and he's using Opera to learn Italian. And I think he's a pretty good tool because Opera is in Italian. But maybe you're going to ask, yeah, but I'm elementary level and I wouldn't understand anything. Don't worry, it's going to take time and it's also for Italian tricky to understand. But not because we cannot speak Italian, but because it's the way they sing. That can be very difficult for our hearing. So I need to pay a lot of attention and concentrate on what they're saying. So for today, I'm going to talk about Il Barbiere di Siviglia. I'm going to give you a background of the story and then we are going to see uh, some little parts of this opera and we are going to paraphrase and we are going to learn so many new expressions. So let me give you a brief background of this opera. So the Barbara of Seville was composed by Rossini. The world premiere was in 1861. However, the first performance was a washout because people didn't enjoy that opera because they were still in love with the previous work made by Paisiello, who basically composed the opera in 1782. However, the original works actually is French and was made by Beaumarchais. I hope they pronounce it correctly. Sorry to the French people. <laughs> I try to learn French, but it doesn't work sometimes. And this kind of opera is considered opera buffa because the serious opera relates more to gods, heroes, you are going to find text in Latin. Opera buffa, however, locate the plot in a more contemporary setting and maybe including the working class, also adding some comic scene. And we're going to see when we're going to analyze a small text. So the main characters are Il Conte Almaviva, who moved to Seville and basically fall in love with Rosina, a Rosina that was kept prisoner by her tutor, Don Bartolo, because Don Bartolo wants to get married with her because Rosina was quite rich. For Il Conte and Rosina, it wasn't very easy to communicate. They found some ways and Il Conte didn't want to present himself like Il Conte, because he wants Rosina to fall in love with him for his personality, not for the title that he has. And then enter the famous character Figaro, who was the barber and helped to basically, he was the messenger between them. And also suggested to Il Conte Naviva to disguise. At least he was able to enter in the house and communicate face to face. So, Il Conte disguised the first time as a soldier looking for a place to stay and the second time as a music composer on behalf of Don Bartolo's assistant that, according to Il Conte, was sick. The problem is that Don Bartolo and his assistant understood that there was something going on. So he keep trying to say bad things about Il Conte and keep discrediting him. However, he organized an escape, but Don Bartolo was really jealous and basically they created like different settings that Il Conte had different affairs, if he wasn't a very genuine person and etc. Until Rosina basically was about to give up everything. And then Il Conte went to the house, declared himself, and finally they decided to get married. So there is an happy end. Okay. So this one is the first paragraph that I have selected, that we are able to analyze a little bit. I'm going to try to read it first, at least you can hear the pronunciation, and then I'm going to give you a translation about it and the words that, in my opinion, are very important. So we are going to see here the character and what they're saying. So, oh buon di signorina. Buongiorno signor Figaro. Ebbene, che si fa? Si muore di noia? Oh diavolo. Possibile una ragazza bella e spiritosa? <ride> mi fate ridere, che mi serve lo spirito che giova la bellezza? Se chiusa sempre sto fra quattro mura, che mi par d'essere proprio in sepoltura. So basically, uh, Figaro goes to Rosina and uh, Figaro is asking, so 
what are you doing? How are you doing? And Rosina said that she's bored because uh, he's locked up. Okay, so let's start from here. So buondi, it's common to say sometimes, and it's another way to say buongiorno. Signorina, miss. Even though actually I wouldn't use it so much to indicate someone's status because it means that basically a lady is not married. But I mean, if you're a woman and you, if you want basically to point out that you're not married, you can say sono signorina. Che si fa? Um, we can translate it like, uh, I would say, what's up? Just to say, so what's up? And Rosina say, si muor di noia. She's saying that she's bored. O diavolo. O diavolo, it's very used actually as an expression. And we can say like, I would say like, what the devil? Like, uh, it usually is a kind of exclamation when you want to indicate surprised. And then say, una ragazza bella e spiritosa. Spiritosa, I would say, like, uh, witty. Another expression that you, we usually use, uh, it's like, mi fate ridere. You make me laugh. You can also use it, for example, when you want, in a sarcastic way, maybe you are arguing with someone and you don't agree with, the other person what he's saying so you're going to say mi fai ridere um, and another expression that we use a lot is this one fra quattro mura basically you want to indicate that the place that you are staying in that moment which can be your house or the office is very small and i would say also claustrophobic so indicating that basically you're not going out and you are in this small environment. Let's go ahead with the second part. Okay, in this part is when Il Conte disguised himself as music composer. So it's a kind of comic scene, let's say. Then I, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to read it first again. Insomma, mio signore, chi è lei? Si può sapere? Don Alonso, professore di musica e allievo di Don Basilio. Don Basilio is the assistant of Bartolo. Ebbene. Don Basilio sta male, il poverino. E in sua vece, etc. So, important. Ok, mi, uh, mio signore, it's like my lord. But uh, no one would say that. Maybe in a sarcastic way you would address someone in that way. So, we can see that basically here, lei is used because Bartolo e il Conte in that scene, they don't know each other, so it's like a courtesy form when you want to address to someone that you don't know or you want to respect because maybe it's older than you. But remember that is also you indicate the feminine gender. Um, important here like professore, teacher and allievo. Allievo, it can be scholar, it can be pupil, and it's actually used. And this is another expression that it's very used. Sta male. Stare male means that you don't feel very well and basically you may be sick. It can be also mentally like sto male because maybe, I don't know, I have anxiety or I'm sad. In sua vece, this one is also used a lot when you want to say on behalf of. Okay, and remember that in Italian we don't il suo sua because I agree with vece la vece sua vece. Okay, it doesn't refer to Don Basilio like it happens in English, for example. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so this one is quite long, but it make you understand why it's called co uh, opera buffa. So, stamane, nella stessa locanda, ero meco d'alloggio, e in mie mani, per caso, capitò questo biglietto della vostra pupilla lui diretto. Che vedo, è sua scrittura. Vi dirò, 
Se io potessi parlare alla ragazza, io credere, fermi grazia? Io farei che me lo diede il conte un'altra amante. Prova significante che il conte di Rosina si fa gioco e perciò. I have to admit, this part is very articulated also for an Italian person because they are using words um, that we don't use it anymore. For example, Firbi Grazia, Ye. So basically what's happening? Il Conte, he was basically in his inn and he found this card. And basically say, I found this card and this card basically was directed to the Conte. Because remember that here, you don't see, we see il conte, but actually in the story, is a, um, a, a music composer, okay? And Bartolo, when he saw the card, said, yeah, this is Rosina's writing. Il conte is saying, yes, actually, if I can talk to her, I can maybe show to her this, this card, and it's a proof that Il Conte has got an affair with someone else. So it's basically a little bit twisted here because you're going to ask, yeah, but she rolled the card. Yes, but basically Il Conte is basically taking advantage of Bartolo and we can say his stupidity. It's only a trick, at least Il Conte can talk to Rosina face to face. Very important words. Uh, biglietto, we can say, for example, cards. Actually, also this one, per caso, we use it quite often to indicate like by any chance. So, and I use it as well a lot at work because it, it, we say it, uh, I per caso una penna? Do you have a pen by any chance? But sometimes it can be some, it can be like uh, ridiculous to say in English because they will say by any chance. But it, we use it. Uh, pupilla, we can translate it as teacher's pet. Um, then, mm. scrittura, writing, so for example we can say io ho una bella scrittura, so I have a good handwriting, o la tua scrittura è brutta, your handwriting is awful, because I cannot read anything. And here, amante, it's very used actually, uh, lover, so to indicate that someone is an affair with someone else, but it's not basically inside the relationship. Uh, si fa gioco. So, si fa gioco it, it, it is used, and we can use it, we can translate it like basically that someone is playing with someone else, but not in a funny way. Basically, you are taking advantage or you are teasing a person. Welcome back. So, I want to apologize if you're going to see the blur in the slides. It's because I use this new software and I used the free trial version and I didn't know until the end when I was making the video that you could see a very massive watermark so I really apologize for that and I want to use it this kind of set because I wanted to do more like a one-to-one -one session I'm going to anyway to post some links if you want to watch the opera or also if you want to find out the translation and then if you have time I would suggest you to when you read the text maybe to stop each word and look up in the dictionary I know that a lot of teachers they're going not to encourage that because you should understand the meaning in general and not the single word but I think the I think though that when you learn a single word you can learn the different uses exceptions and you can increase your vocabulary. But however, remember that when you read a text like what we read now, we, you can learn, I think, of 3,000 words. So you need to be aware how to do it. Because otherwise, in three weeks, you're going to forget everything. And all the effort that you made is going to vanish. So I would suggest you maybe to keep a notebook, write down the words, and try to use them in your daily conversation. Obviously, don't use Ferbi Grazia, because we don't use it. If you like the video, remember to give me a thumbs up. If you have any more requests, please email me or text in the comment section below, and I'm willing to do it. I really enjoyed to do this video, and thank you, Aiden. Bye for now.